Hello my dirty denizens, and welcome back to the Obscure Animals Iceberg. If you haven't checked part one, it'll be here or here somewhere around here in the ether, and there'll be no more dealing about. Let's just get right into it. While it may look like someone spliced the raccoon and leopard together, thankfully that is not the case. This is a civet, native to tropical Asia and Africa. Aside from its peculiar looks, this is a remarkably interesting animal. Civets produce a musk that is highly valued by fragrance makers for its smell and as a stabilizing agent in perfume. This has led to civets being killed for their musk or raised on farms designed to harvest it. Naturally, this is a bit appalling and has begun to fall out of vogue with synthetic replacements being worked on by companies like Chanel. Also, unlike most filiforms, the civet is mainly herbivorous. Some even use flower nectar as a source of energy. Famously, civets are the backbone to kopi iwok. I definitely butchered that, which is a type of coffee. It's prepared using cherries that have been eaten and, well, uh, pooped pooped out by a civet. The enzymes in the civet's stomach affects the beans and it leads to a much sought after aroma and flavor. Just one pound of the stuff can run about 600 US dollars. Sadly, humans will feed civets just these cherries to maximize output and it leads to malnourishment. All for a cup of poop coffee. It may conjure up images of a grandmotherly shark figure carefully making cookies for her shark grandchildren. The reality is much more in line with an H.P. Lovecraft monster. The cookie cutter shark name was popularized by shark expert Stuart Springer, although he did at first call them demon whale biters, which doesn't roll off the tongue very well, but it does sound way cooler. The shark is relatively small, but that's not an issue considering how it feeds. It uses its fleshy, suction-like lips to fasten itself to its prey. Then, rows of knife-like teeth rip out a circular chunk of flesh out of the victim, leaving distinct circular wounds, their uniformity and rapidity conjuring up the image of a cookie cutter cutting out sections of dough. And size doesn't matter to the demon whale biter. They'll go after anything that swims too close. And what are its victims to do? Use their arms to get it off? I don't think so. Score one for the primates. While it's rare, they do occasionally attack humans, but rarely, if ever, does it end in death. Husas are the largest carnivores in Madagascar. You may also recall them from the hit DreamWorks movie named after said country. The country of Djibouti, of course. It may look like a cat, but it's actually a member of the family Udipalilibet, something like that. It's on the screen. Due to filling a similar role as predatory cats, it has convergently evolved similar characteristics. Not a cat, though. Don't forget that. Think more like a mongoose that got really big and is really trying to be a cat. Fosa's diet consists of mainly lemurs, over 50% as a matter of fact. The rest consists of other small prey animals such as rodents, birds, and lizards. They mate on horizontal branches, yes, in the trees, and <clears throat> the process can last several hours, yes, hours. Maybe they're helping themselves to a few of those questionable gas station pills. Hey. Enjoying this so far? Oh, I knew it. I've been told that the YouTube algorithm likes it when I ask someone to subscribe and like and comment in the middle of the video, so here we are. The glass frog is native to the trees of South Central and South America. At first, it may look like any old garden variety frog. You flip that bad boy over, however, and its name will suddenly make sense. The skin on its abdomen is nearly transparent, giving a very clear picture of its anatomy. Its blood is very visible when it's moving around, but when it sleeps, most of the blood retreats to the liver, hiding the frog more effectively. For a long while, scientists were puzzled by the wacko evolution of the glass frog. Other than it looking like a cheap plastic knockoff, of the early 2000s, what's the point? It was observed that the coloring of the legs helped soften the outline of its body against the foliage, giving it some effective camouflage. Plus, it does look pretty neat. My man went full goblin mode. Aside from being extremely grotesque, well, actually that's the main draw here. Goblin sharks live in the bithopelagic zone at depths greater than 100 meters. The prominent nose is full of electroreceptors, allowing it to sense the electrical field produced by other organisms. In this way, it can sort of sniff out prey where the light is extremely limited. Their jaws are also exceptional, being able to extend greatly, sometimes past the point of their nose. Lives in the dark, check. Ugly as all hell? Check. 
Love of gold and attacking low-level adventurers? Well, maybe not. Well, despite their fierce appearance, there are no records of goblin shark attacks on humans, so there's no need to phone Goblin Slayer. Also known as the Blue Sea Slug, or more coolly known as the Blue Dragon. I doubt I can pronounce its actual name, seeing my track record so far in this video, so we're going to stick with Blue Dragon. As one might notice, it looks awesome. They're pretty small though, only 1-3 to three centimeters long. The blue on its top and the silver on its bottom assist in camouflage against predators. Don't be fooled by its small size and pretty colors, however. The Blue Dragon is as fierce as its name implies. Its personal favorite food is the Portuguese Man o' War. Not the ship, the not jellyfish jellyfish. Kinda looks like a floating bag of plastic. A PLASTIC BAG OF DOOM! The Blue Dragon feeds on their tentacles, storing the Man o' War's venom in specialized sacks in its inventory. This makes the Blue Dragon exceptionally dangerous to predators and to people alike. Not related in any sense of the word to the Hammerhead Shark. The Hammerheaded Bat is a species of Megabat. Yes. Megabat. It's native to West Central Africa, and it gets its name due to a face even a mother would struggle to love. When I was researching this, I was imagining something that looked more like a hammer-headed shark and less, well, less like this. They have an impressive wingspan, however, of one meter and spend their time smashing nail bats with their hammerheads. No, just kidding. They feed primarily on fruit, similar to most other megabat species. They can form colonies into the thousands, which seeing that would just make me soil myself if I ever had the misfortune to find a cave full of them. They're important to the ecosystem due to their dispersal of seeds that they excrete out after eating the fruit. Thank you, Megabat. <laughs> While it may sound like Anamanapia from the 60s Batman show, the Kakapo is a gentle species of endangered parrot. It has also been known as the Owl Parrot due to its circular face and nocturnal habits. Kakapos are simply just too thick to fly, preferring to adorably plod along the forest floor. They're also the longest living bird, being able to outlast most people at a lifespan of up to a hundred years. Living with very little predators on New Zealand, the kakapo has little need to do much other than to look like a giver of great wisdom in a children's book. However, once good old humans introduced mammalian predators to the island, the population suffered greatly. The remaining population is confined to a few predator-free islands around New Zealand, and listen to their mating calls. <coughs> Simply irresistible. The maned wolf is a sizable canine native to South America. While it may be called a wolf and look like a fox, it is genetically neither. Instead, being the solitary member of the species Chrysothogorawa which translates to golden dog. Aside from the mane that gives it its name, another distinguishing feature is its very long legs, making it the tallest of wild canids. These long appendages are well suited for the grasslands in which it lives. They also have a noticeable cannabis-like odor when they mark their territory, giving it the nickname skunk wolf. Unlike other wolves, the maned wolf is a solitary animal, more of a sigma wolf, if you will. They're omnivorous animals and eat a wide variety of animals, fruits, and vegetables. One being named after it, the wolf apple. The maned wolf is essential to the proliferation of many plant species in its native habitat. Who's that Pokemon? You guessed right, a Pika. It's a few syllables short of a certain electric type Pokemon, but kind of looks like a mouse, so uh, that's, that's something. Nintendo, please don't copyright strike me, oh god, please don't, please don't. Pikas are rather cute mammals native to the mountains of Asia and North America. They're more closely related to rabbits than to mice, down to the cute little ears. They're even known as the whistling hare due to their high-pitched warning call, and they carve out an idyllic existence feeding on plant matter and sharing burrows with snow finches. Truly an enviable way to live. I think this is more well known now due to that video from China that was definitely not a man in a bear suit. Uh, probably. Out of all the bears, it's the smallest at only 25 to 65 kilograms or 55 to 143 pounds. Not often I can say I weigh more than a bear. The sun bear is an arboreal bear, meaning it's an excellent climber and spends its time sleeping and sunbathing in the treetops. It doesn't get its name from its heliocentric habit, but rather from the distinctive markings on its chest. The bright color stands out enough to give it its name. They're active during the day and don't hibernate due to the constant prevalence of food. 
Sadly, they're threatened due to heavy deforestation and poaching. The global population has declined 35% since the 90s. Tarsiers are a tiny primate native to maritime Southeast Asia. One thing you might take note of is the size of those peepers. Each eyeball is about 16 millimeters in diameter, which can be larger than its brain. All the better to see you with, I guess. Like an owl, they have great flexibility in their neck, being able to swing it around 180 degrees in both directions. They're the only entirely carnivorous primate, even if it is mostly insects. They are small, but they are also mighty. If a predator is in the area, the tarsier will emit a warning call. And <laughs> within moments... <laughs> God. That's <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> God damn it. Within moments... <laughs> I can't say this, I got. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> okay. Within moments, a gang of little monkeys with horribly huge eyes will show up and all attack the predator, and I certainly wouldn't want to be in that situation. Tuataras are cute little reptiles native to New Zealand. They're actually not that little, being the largest reptile on the islands. They're used in rat eradication programs to remove invasive rats from said islands. Effective little buggers, aren't they? Other than their highly impressive rat hunting abilities, there's not much else to them, so uh, just have a cute picture of one. Tufted puffins are gentlemanly birds native throughout the North Pacific Ocean. They're actually the largest of all puffins, weighing in at approximately 1.6 pounds. What a heavyweight. They look just like any other puffin, except for breeding season when they get these yellow tufts, hence its name. Both sexes get this fancy hair, and their feet become bright red and their faces bright white. Once the breeding season is over, the hair falls out and the color recedes. Like other puffins, they're well adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. And that's it for Tier 3 of the Obscure Animal Iceberg. Hopefully I can get Tier 4 out in a reasonable amount of time. Hopefully. But if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And you are the real OG. Thank you. Be sure to leave a like, a comment, and consider subscribing if you're new here. And, uh, yeah. Until next time, goodbye.